The Sacramento Metropolitan Arts Commission is a public agency devoted to supporting and advancing the arts in Sacramento County. The commission provides funding to local artists and arts groups through its outreach and educational activities. Created in 1977, the commission celebrates its 40th year of promoting and supporting the arts. Former Sacramento Mayor Phil Eisenberg and former Chair of the Commission Susan Willoughby join us to share their perspective on the history and impact of the Commission next on Studio Sacramento. At Five Star Bank, we create thoughtful solutions to help the capital region thrive, from economic development and education to public health and safety, issues that are vitally important to Sacramento's prosperity. We're proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. Before we begin our conversation, let me first disclose two things. KVIE has been a recipient of funding from the Commission, and while I'm a volunteer in my role as host, I should disclose that my wife, Celestine Syfax, is a volunteer citizen commissioner. Susan, what is the importance of the arts in our community? I think that if you were to take away every piece of music and every dance and every painting, you would find a pretty arid, dry community. I think that what adds life to um, our, our world, um, a personal kind of life, not a technical one, um, one that hands-on experience that people can actually enjoy, I think this makes us alive and it makes us vital. And, and I'm curious, <laughs> Phil, when you were mayor and you decided to take this on as an initiative, why? I like the arts. Um, I like the visual arts. I like, I like music. I, I, I like a wide range of things. And Marilyn and I uh, have maintained that for a very long time now. Uh, and I like artists, troubling and difficult as they can be. I like artists because they talk to society about things in a different way and they liven the spirit of a community. So one of the, one of the things that, that attracted me is a chance to do something about art. But uh, it wasn't just starting at one thing. I mean, if you look back in time, Judge, uh, Judge Crocker was vacuuming up uh, most of Europe uh, on buying trips in the low, late 1800s, uh, delivering you know, boxcars full of art to what's now the Crocker Museum. The, the, the regional art institutions at academic places, UC Davis, CSU, the, the community colleges, have been building up a cadre of artists and talented students for a very long time. And uh, by the time uh, Susan and I got involved in, in uh, city activities uh, in the 1970s, uh, we had started with a bunch of miscellaneous things and an artist employment program was authorized by the federal government and you either hire artists to mow lawns as Susan says or you hire artists to do works of art much like the WPA during the uh, Great Depression and so that program was existing in the city of Sacramento uh, a nascent uh, uh, relationship with the city was there but at, at the point in time where the new city council came in, district elections were held and we had a more diverse council. Uh, you had somebody like Burnett Miller, uh, whose family's been here since the very, very start of oh, Sacramento yes. and deeply interested in the arts and educated in the arts. He was on the city council. So all those things just worked and it's fun. That's basically why I like the arts. It's fun, it's interesting, it's exciting. You meet people you'd never meet any other way. Now at the time though, was it common for communities throughout the country, or certainly throughout California, to have formal public bodies uh, whose whole role was the advocacy and expansion of arts? Uh, it was, it had happened, it was not commonplace. Um, San Francisco is a good example. Seattle is a great example. And what we tried to do when we thought about it in Sacramento was go look at those great examples and see what was working. So we actually had, there were some other leaders 
um, but not very many. I mean, I think people have, since that time, have looked at Sacramento as being one of the great leaders. It's interesting to go back to 1977, and you think about some of the common notions related to Sacramento, uh, cow town, right. uh, somewhat provincial, and the arts it tends to be associated with, you know... Controversy. Well, controversy, urbane sophistication, that sort of thing. Tell us about Sacramento and, and the world in which you both were creating this commission at the time. Well, the, the, the city council in the 1970s had, had, had changed to district elections. So all of a sudden we had a much more ethnically and socially diverse population. And all us young folks, at least at that time, <laughs> uh, you know, we always, every, every new generation thinks the old generation are old fogies and should move aside. But a bunch of, bunch of people got elected and got involved and we just had kind of a revolution of art. The, the, the CETA artist program, the uh, Comprehensive Employment and Training Act program was a little start. And then we began to tinker based on the Seattle example of art in public places with the notion that public buildings should have, as a matter of course, public art. And significant size buildings in a community that are privately owned, particularly if they receive city support, should also donate a portion of their work. So the parking garage down near the Macy's store, down near the now, near the new arena, is, is kind of a classic example of public art. All those things happened, but of course, government officials are not used to dealing with the problems of public artworks and all of that. So we were sitting around, and, and during the 1975 mayor's campaign, when I got elected, Susan had kind of done a working draft of what arts program should look like in Sacramento. One of the ideas was a Metropolitan Arts Commission. I don't know if that's the name you used. Neither of us can find the memo. Burnett Miller was deeply interested in the idea. And it, it just started to work, mainly also because smart city staff and, and some smart city managers realized they didn't want to handle the art-related commotion City staff weren't trained for it. You got to move faster in, in the arts. It's much more private sector and entrepreneurial. And so the notion of a governmental agency, a commission, whatever it is, became attractive. And then, of course, I sucked Susan into being an unpaid special assistant to the mayor for arts, the first ever. Oh. Uh, and she did it for six years. And all she ever got for it were business cards, which she would hand out. But she kind of orchestrated all of this stuff that was going on. So, so you were an unpaid volunteer working in the office of the mayor. Yes. Okay. Hmm. And, and there wasn't a salary, but that business card did allow me to get in a lot of doors that I might not have been able to get into otherwise. Um, so, and knowing that if, if all of this background work were done, that there was the will, on, particularly on the city council, to actually make this happen, made it actually a pretty rewarding experience. Mm -hmm. And your efforts, uh, uh, the efforts that you made as a volunteer were <clears throat> kind of fundamental for creating the commission in the first place. You had to bring, yes, yeah, somebody had to bring people together, had to sit down in a room. Fifteen people were appointed by the city and county to actually hash out all the details, like how many commissioners there would be, how often they would meet, who would be responsible for funding them. So all that had to happen before a draft could even go to the council. It's just board. ironic because our last mayor, Kevin Johnson, was criticized for having unpaid volunteers working in his office, but obviously that your efforts and the high wage you were paid has resulted in, a, in an institution that has stood the test of time. Tell, but tell you, have, bef you have to go back to the time that the mayor only had one secretary. That was the only staff that she had. The mayor and only no, had one secretary? No secret council member hmm. had any staff. Hmm. So, yes, I was unpaid, but th that was the only way something was going to get done. So, when, when you first took on this initiative mm -hmm. for Mayor Eisenberg at the time, mm -hmm. What was the response in the community as you were trying to pull together the will to put this commission in place? I think there was a lot of general support, 
Um, but each of the players also had a private agenda, you know, so all of that had to be sort of meshed together where everybody can feel comfortable about the structure that was being organized. But there was a lot of support. Hmm. And when you first launched the commission, I'm curious as to was, was the fight typically when, when new initiatives like this are put into place, the fight is not only who's going to be on it, but where the funding comes from. How did you, how did you tackle that? Well, because there were supportive members of the city council, an open-minded city manager, and supportive staff, supporting and supportive and bemused staff members of the city who thought it was kind of an interesting idea. Uh, and the city council support, Burnett Miller's support in particular, made it all possible because he spoke to the business community in a way I, I could not. Uh, those that's, a, that's interesting, though, because, you know, today, um, there, there almost sometimes is, is this sort of bipolar nature where um, there's an argument among uh, people who, who promote fiscal conservatism. We shouldn't be spending money on things like the arts. Uh, we should be spending it on, you know, roads and the, all, all, all fine things. So, but then at the same time, if you talk to business leaders, one of the things that they talk about, about attracting and retaining employees and creating a level of commerce uh, that we all aspire to is a thriving arts community. Mm -hmm. that, that's a, a consistent conversation. Was it that way at the time? Um, I think if you had people like Burnett, that was fine. Uh, when we worked through our first requirements that there be art in public places um, elements for private developments that ha were building in the redevelopment area, I think initially every one of those developers thought it was a 2% tax and really resented it. By the time we were through the whole process and their building was up and they saw what it had done, that just vanished. I mean, they realized this was a really good investment for them financially as well as aesthetically. So from, from the time when I was much younger, the one arts and public places project that I remember most was there was a controversy surrounding something called the Foxheads. What was that? Okay, this is, this is the Library Galleria project. And um, the this library... This is Dr. Peter McCune. Dr. Late... Peter McCune, yes. Mm -hmm. um, he was involved in building the office building, and that was actually making possible a renovation of the main library. Um, in his office building, he was creating what he thought was a grand place for Sacramento. And he wanted to do that in the library building as well, uh, but he was, that was not his private money. And the other people who were on the official board making decisions said, we don't want all this fine. We want to have a counterpoint to all this elegance, which was not what Peter had in mind. And so um, he said, okay, I'm bowing out. I don't control this, so you guys go ahead. So there was a little, you know, there's always, when there's a private-public partnership, there's maybe always a, a little bit of resentment. But I want to go back to what Phil started with, with um, funding this, because he has left out the fact that the county of Sacramento was actually involved with funding as well. And Sandra Smalley, who was a, a member of the Board of Supervisors at the time, was the real key um, point for the entry into the county, and she had been supportive of this all along. I mean, she was the person who carried it through the Board of Supervisors. Well, well, sticking on funding for a second, if you both were able to go back and turn the clock back 40 years and do a reset, knowing what you know today, is there anything that, that either of you would have done differently in setting up the funding not only for the commission, but on a broader level, the arts in Sacramento? I guess my answer would be maybe. But the important thing is a, a big deal like the Arts Commission today and all their activities started really small. I mean, you, you look at the meetings, minutes of that first meeting, and it was, I don't know, 12 people got together. Susan was the first commissioner. The mayor's secretary is taking notes. They all get together, and immediately upon taking the oath, they start being assigning things. Oh, hi, here's the city garage where murals are going to be going. You guys have to handle it. That's meaning. Anyway. Was it that meeting we transferred the CETA artist? 
which was one of the, well, it, it was a Please. great no, no, come on. It was a great program, but when you get a whole bunch of artists involved who are producing artworks for the public, they are, they have to be managed. They're not, they want to do their art. They don't want to fill out forms or report to anyone, and they're certainly not used to city accounting rules. So somebody, Susan, or the Arts Commission eventually has to handle all the mechanics behind all that. Um, there was a representative of the uh, Carter Hawley Hale Development Company there uh, talking about the, the, making some reference to the pending art in public places requirement. It's a, for something that started with no particular amount of money, a whole bunch of duties got imposed to, was there one staff member working for the... There was no staff member. Okay, so 11 commissioners are appointed by the city and the county, right? Um, they meet. There is not a staff person. They have no staff. They will not have staff for another four or five months while the city figures out how to hire a staff person. Um, so actually, they did pretty, we did pretty well, I think. Um, but, um, but there were these charges and there were these programs who were almost ready in place. So they had a lot to work with. Um, but they also became um, almost full-time employees on their own until staff was able to be elected. As you look back, point out for us some of the works of art that we all pass by every day uh, within the county and the city proper that we might not know would not exist were it not for the establishment of the Art Com Arts Commission. Okay, so if you're walking down 9th Street in front of the, the main library, you have these gorgeous bronze cougars out there in front without a city ordinance. That wouldn't have happened. Um, if you walk, if you, if you go down Capitol Mall, you get in front of a building which is like at 3rd and Capitol. Um, there's a great big wonderful waterfall. That's in front of the Emerald The Emerald C Building. Emerald mm -hmm. City Building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was done by mm -hmm. um, an artist who at the time was chairman of the art department at Yale University. That kind of thing would not have been there without, without that kind of ordinance. Um, I think that the, the Cesar Chavez um, in, in, Capitol, in, in City Park in front of the City yep. Hall, those things wouldn't have happened. Uh, so I think those are sort of sort of some big pieces that people probably don't even think about how did it get there. I think that many of us take for granted some of the things that we walk by, we interact with, and we enjoy. Well, if you walk down the mall, if you can get past the construction, uh, and in front of the Holiday Inn, you, you walk th through and by the Indo Arch. And it, talk about controversy, that was a boy. Really? Tell us. Well, the Sacramento <laughs> Union. Dis Sacramento Union was then the second daily newspaper in Sacramento, and they they started the crusade against public art, and they didn't like the Indo Arch, and so it went on for six or nine months and all of that. It, but it got finessed because it was all as a result of a public process, kind of orchestrated by by Susan. But everything done in public, to essentially ratify the notion that you want to have a beautiful city not simply a boring, sterile city. And, and you know you're going in the right direction if there's some controversy involved. It's interesting to me um, that you both created, along with the council and the county board of supervisors at the time, this commission to act as both container and uh, uh, presenter, you know, a, a supporter of the arts. Because at the time, one of the things when, when you talk to people who study history in Sacramento, this was a time of some of the worst architectural decisions uh, in Sacramento's history. And so do you find it interesting at all that you all and the group of folks you were working with were creating this arts commission to celebrate uh, beauty and aesthetics and uh, its impact on the human spirit at the same time that we were really creating some fairly boring architecture or destroying great old architecture around the community. Um, one of the reasons, not only in Sacramento, but in other cities that arts commissions got started, 
was that after World War II, there were all these redevelopment projects that tore out all these great old buildings and put in other buildings that were very functional but pretty sterile. This didn't just happen in Sacramento. It happened in a number of places. And so people began to go to European cities and say, why do these cities that have plazas that have been around for 500 years, why do they still work? Well, one of the reasons they work is there's evidence of the man of hand there. Man of hand? Man of hand. hand. What is <laughs> the hand, hand of, of man. man. <laughs> Sorry. But there is this, this sense of, of, of a real phys of, of special presence. Mm -hmm. And they thought that maybe that's one of the things we should be doing in cities is requiring that kind of thing to happen. And they knew they had to require it. You couldn't just say it's a great idea. Well, so that's why these percent for art programs began here and everywhere else. Well, at the same time, uh, the preservation movement for historic homes in in grid old Sacramento, the Victorians, so what was we under the grand old ladies. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 old city association and all of their activities uh, led to the adoption of of regulations attempting to preserve the most architecturally interesting and valuable and significant of those buildings. All that, all that ferment of neighborhoods and community and taste and art was going on in colleges, on campuses, in cities, in counties. And, and the remarkable thing is we had a bipartisan agreement uh, uh, on art. When you talk about Sandy Smoley who was in and out as chair of the Board of Supervisors or, or Susan Peters. And they are, they are people who have an interest in the arts themselves but are willing to be open-minded about it. And the other thing is the Arts Commission never got much money from anyone, even in the halcyon days that the staff all looks back on. I don't know, did they ever break $5 million? I, I mean, for staff, I doubt it. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. Right now they're down to about 3.5 or something. I don't know. I mean, and, and for a city budget, which must is in the hundreds of millions of dollars, that is pretty small. The impact of the commission is significant. Their relationship with the artists themselves is almost positive. Although there's always an argument: if you don't get a, if you don't get awarded the arts commission, you know you're mad at them for a while. But because it's been done fairly and reasonably, because we've had really stellar staff, including Shelley Willis, the director who just stepped down, uh, we've been able to do it kind of. I hate to say it this way, been done on the cheap. I mean, it's, it, this is not a big government program. It is a small government program with a high energy level. Incidentally, what, were the uh, concrete statues on K Street Mall a public arts project? No. Oh, now, wait a minute, Susan, there was a public arts project. The <laughs> Way before the Arts Commission. The Downtown Business Association. These are the business guys, guys like you. They decided they wanted to beautify the, the K Street Mall. So they, they hired some architect, I think, who designed a scale model of the state of California with all the mountain elevations varying in water and all of that kind of stuff, which became the tank traps on the K Street Mall. Uh, that, that's in the 60s, as I remember, before all the Okay, so I, I, I can't hold you both responsible. No, we're not responsible for, for that. that one. Yeah, you could. But it, but it came out. Didn't that come out around the time that the commission was being established? Uh, it came out when light rail. Well, light rail got to Sacramento with uh, a bunch of uh, uh, activity later, the 70s and the 80s, and trading trading in an old freeway designation uh, near the, uh, but the, the... But that's sort of when it came out. I, we talk, you talked about bipartisan. Right. The Arts Commission actually, uh, and the arts community, also has many layers of partisanship. And one that I wanted you all to comment on is, we've been talking a lot in this conversation about what are some of the projects that we all walk past and sometimes don't acknowledge that would not be there if it weren't for the programs and the efforts mm -hmm. of the Arts Commission mm -hmm. and it being established in the first place. But one of, the, one of the things it also points to is that visual arts tends to be permanent in nature, but performing arts also has a significant uh, role uh, in the Arts Commission's right. work. Right. Um, how did that discussion take place as to where the money goes? Because I'm sure that the visual artists said, hey, invest in us, you'll have something for eternity. Um, 
And the performing artists would say, yeah, but it's inert and dead. <laughs> so, you know, how did you all rationalize that? Well, there's actually kind of an easy answer for part of it. <laughs> and that's because an art in public places program funds itself. I mean, there is a percentage of the, of the money that goes for any particular project takes care of the staff for that project. Not public money, but project money. Sure. Project money. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that that kind of makes it a little easier for grants to go out to things other than those big public art projects. I, I can remember from city council days, the other attraction of letting the Arts Commission uh, handles requests on arts is the council is constantly barraged by every group in Sacramento who wants money. And if you can say, well, we're going to allocate $25,000, commission, you decide who should get it. Very smart. And we're going to leave the conversation there. Okay. And that's our show. Thanks to our guests and thanks to you for watching Studio Sacramento. I'm Scott Sifax. See you next time right here on KVIE. Five Star Bank, we create thoughtful solutions to help the capital region thrive, from economic development and education to public health and safety, issues that are vitally important to Sacramento's prosperity. We're proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. All episodes of Studio Sacramento, along with other KVIE programs, are available to watch online at kvie.org video.